Well, uh, I've heard some of these comments uh, from the different people that have come through to the various meetings. It's all a blur now, but uh, uh, so the, the, the one guy that spoke seeming to have a listening sort of a, an ear, uh, he was talking about not 280, not just uh, at Winchester, but 280, the entire corridor. And uh, going all the way up to, I don't know where they cut off, Palo Alto or? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they did take a run at putting in an off-ramp uh, on Winchester five or six years ago. And uh, there were voices against it. Um, <coughs> I have a couple of thoughts. You know, I mean, we, we talked about is Winchester a grand boulevard or is it a main street and after that that meeting I sort of walked away thinking it's really probably both maybe between uh, the freeway and Stevens Creek it's a grand boulevard and between uh, you know between uh, Moore Park and Hamilton it's maybe a more like a main street but if they throw in an off-ramp uh, as they did at Saratoga well you know, Saratoga is kind of a mess, Saratoga Avenue. Uh, and what I've been told is that the rules, quote unquote, are that you're not supposed to have uh, ramps within a certain distance. I can't remember what it is, a quarter mile or a mile or something like that, an off ramp and an on ramp. But it seems to me like they're violating one of the rules by throwing it in so close to the spaghetti bowl of 880 and 280. Uh, and it's already kind of confusing for people coming from downtown. Do I go to Santa Cruz? Do I go to Oakland? So it's confusing at, at freeway speeds what, what you're supposed to do. And so I'm not really convinced personally what's the right answer. Uh, closing off Tish was one of the suggestions that they had the last time around, making it a one-way street and basically only allowing one way in or out of that, that little enclave, that quadrant. Uh, you know, which would be at Monroe. Uh, so, uh, and they also violate a second rule, which is supposedly where you have an off-ramp, you're supposed to have a corresponding on-ramp, which, you know, I don't know how they would ever put an on-ramp in uh, going, you know, towards downtown on 280 at Winchester. So they would allow more cars to, to dump into our little neighborhood but they wouldn't uh, allow them to get out. And the primary uh, benefact beneficiary is Santana Row and Valley Fair. It's giving them sort of a secondary way in and out of Santana Row and Valley Fair because they have one that they just built, which they say will, will be sort of uh, outgrowing in the next 10 years. Um, I don't really know what the solution is, but if we don't build a freeway off-ramp there, then I also don't know if a freeway cap is a good idea. I don't, I'm not really sure how all that fits together. Uh, there's a lot swirling in my head, but I know Steve Landau has all the answers, so. <laughs> so I, I don't have the answers, but um, a couple of things come to mind. I, I think that the reality is that we face three or four dilemmas. The, the rules and things can change and the details of any program get worked out over time. But the dilemmas it seemed based on what we heard at the last meeting is do we look at public transportation as a social activity, a, a social benefit activity, going to places where there isn't a lot of ridership but performing a social service, or is it really focused on transportation of the largest number of people? So that's dilemma number one, and, and that was kind of the worksheet that they right, gave right, us at the end. Versus coverage, right? Was right. That the, yeah. um, the the second kind of dilemma I think that we face is that, as far as I can tell, everything I've read, transit works better with higher density. And we hear a lot, particularly in this, well, you hear a lot everywhere throughout the, the county of people not wanting density. So if you want transit to really work and you need density, but you don't want any of the density, how are you going to make it work? So there's a, there's a dilemma there as well. Um, and that, that I think is countywide and maybe statewide. The, the third dilemma kind of relates to the, the Winchester off-ramp is if I step back and not worry about my particular 
neighborhood and the traffic on Winchester, my gut feel is that the Saratoga and 280 situation is much worse than the Winchester and 280 situation. And that if we have $150 million to spend to fix a problem, we should fix Saratoga and 280 before we fix anything at Winchester and 280. Uh, kind of to what Pat said, what I've been, what I've heard behind the scenes is that yes, the current off ramp on Stevens Creek is going to be impacted in 10 years and that Winchester will help alleviate that problem. But for me, that's 10 years. I mean, we just finished building this thing and it took six years and you're saying it's debt, you know, it's, it's obsolete in 10 years. That's not a good return. Um, and if we really had an extra $150 million and we couldn't use it at Saratoga, maybe that $150 million actually builds the cap. The world's going to change and I would, I, it, everybody's opinion is going to be different, but if we, if we step back and say, what do we really want? You know, an additional five acres of parkland at, at that intersection of Winchester and 280 might be a fair trade-off in some people's mind against additional traffic in other areas. So th these are dilemmas that I think we face as a, as a region and, and the little details of how traffic specifically flows or, or you know, distance between things are kind of the, to me, the details.